In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on assembly constraints inside of Inventor. So here I have assembly constraints 2, IAM, from our working files directory. And I'm going to just continue on with the constraint command here. And I'm going to begin by looking at our symmetry constraint. So this is a little bit newer constraint tool that was added just a couple years ago. And a lot of people were asking for it because they want to create symmetry between certain faces. So we'll begin by selecting this as my first geometric reference for constraining. And then I'll pick this side of this cube here as my second one. Now for my line of symmetry, I'm actually going to choose my origin folder from that cube and pick on one of the planes inside of there, namely the YZ plane. So that went ahead and made it symmetric there for me. And I'll go ahead and apply that. You have first face, second face, and then symmetry plane. Now it is going through there a little bit. So how about I do a mate constraint to the top of this face, to the bottom of the cube. And I'll just use my selection filter there to make sure I select that and apply. Now something looks a little bit off here. If I were to turn this view around to the back side and zoom in, I can see that this cube is actually not symmetrical on that face. What gives? Well, let's take a look at how this cube was modeled. If I look in here at the origin plane of the YZ, it appears that this cube was not built to be symmetric around the YZ plane. Therefore, my symmetric reference here was technically invalid. So what I wanna do is get rid of that constraint and recreate it in a different way. So here I see symmetry one, and as you create constraints, you'll see those listed down here underneath the components. You can also locate them in your relationships folder at the top of your assembly browser and they do work in pairs. So this was part of the cube file. It was also part of the rectangle four hole. If I expand that, I will also see the same symmetry one constraint listed there. Again, I don't want it though, so I'm just gonna right click on it and choose delete and recreate this in a different way. So now I will do a symmetric reference from here. And as you can see, I grabbed an edge. I actually don't want that. I'll go back up to selections and choose face instead. Then I do want the back side of this cube still. Now for my symmetry plane, how about I choose an origin plane on my rectangle piece instead? Well, I can't do that because as you can see, it's not really put there on the symmetry. So in this case, I'm running myself into a brick wall. I've gone through a couple different options on symmetry here. It hasn't really worked out for me, primarily because I didn't model my components in a logical manner. I really should have put these components together based on their origin planes. So this is a very valuable lesson to look at. How you build your parts can have effects on how you can assemble them easily when you get to the assembly environment. So because I am having problems there, I'm gonna hit escape and start over and approach this in a little bit more traditional way of just grabbing on this face here, this face here, and doing a flush constraint for that instead. Now the only downside of doing it this way, rather than having a nice symmetry constraint and building things nicely off an origin, is if I were to change the width of my rectangle four hole, but not change the width of the cube, then I would have constraints that would possibly fall apart and things that would not line up in an appropriate manner. So be very aware of how you put your parts together and how you can aid yourself later on how to constrain them. Now my next task is to get this cube onto this hole down here. So I could have actually approached this a couple different ways, but I really wanted to show the symmetry there and some of those nuances. Choose insert now and use the bottom circular edge of this cube, which how do I know I'm getting the bottom circular edge of the cube and not the circular edge of this part? I could choose the pick part first option, which makes me pick this part. And now when I choose something on this part, I know it's part of that cube. Then when I pick this part, I can make sure it's that circular edge. So it's a few more clicks, but it can definitely help you filter through and make sure you're grabbing the right geometry. I'll go ahead and apply that and cancel out of here. So there's my cube. Next up, I would like to place this threaded rod into this particular design as well. If I look at the threaded rod in my browser, I can see this one was built intelligently to be symmetric around the XY plane. So what I could do here 
is grab my constraint command, select that XY plane, and I mate that to this face here and choose apply. So I got that location there locked in pretty good. Next, I will do a mate of the axis of this to the axis of this hole down below. So again, I do want to use my pick part first. I'll pick this part here, and then I'm going to mate it to that axis of that hole. Go ahead and apply that. And since we're working kind of in the inside now, I'll turn to the side here so you can see this better. If I were to go to a wireframe mode, you can definitely see that inside there, although it doesn't look like exactly centered. So I'm going to hit cancel here, and I'm going to go back to my assembly browser and find that mate constraint where I put those two planes together. And what I really want to do is change the offset value of that. So with mate 3 selected, this may not be the same mate number that you're doing, but it's this mate that I have that I'm working with. I have a zero inch offset right now. So if I go down here and change this to let's say 0.125 and hit enter, we'll see what that does. It actually shifts it up. So maybe I want negative 0.125 to shift it down. And now that is centered in there. So that's what I want. Just modifying the offset value. Here we go back to a shaded with edges. And I'm going to insert these washers and these nut screws as well. So I'll use my insert constraint to here, apply, insert constraint to the bottom, apply, insert constraint there. And you don't have to go to the dialog box each time. You could right click and choose apply. What's nice is if you use apply instead of hitting OK and canceling out of the command, you don't have to keep reselecting your type over and over again. Because every time you come into the constraint dialog, it will automatically default itself back to the mate type. By using apply, it keeps me on the insert type. So since I'm done there, I'll choose OK. Now the only constraint we didn't cover inside there is the tangent constraint. This tangent constraint is something where you can have two faces tangent to each other, and you have two different solutions for that as well. So you can have it where you have the tangency to the inside or the tangency to the outside based on your selections. Now the only other thing I didn't do to fully lock this design in place was remove the rotation in the washers and the nut screws. So right now I can actually rotate these as well as the washer, which again, you're really not gonna tell that too much. You're not gonna see that. But if you try to constrain something to it, or if you're trying to do an analysis, or you're just curious about how Inventor Performance handles this in general, it's actually better to lock out that degree of freedom rather than leave it open. So I could lock this down with more angle constraints to the origin of these parts. This has been a look at assembly constraints inside of Autodesk Inventor.